Inshallah and Ashe. Blessings to you, my energetic beings, and welcome back to the Musing Moon Meditation. I am your host. I am a practicing holistic shamedium and subtle energetic surgeon. My thing is to merge the indigenous technologies, the spirit of West Africa, Burkina Faso, the Dagara tribe, and Dano, with subtle energies, elements, and the elemental beings into the imaginal realm, and so much more. Just by merging these indigenous ways with the subtle realms to really assist you into navigating your prime directive, reintroducing you to and through the magical being that I believe resides within each and every one of us. My name is Tanya D, and welcome to my audio medicine room. And if you haven't already, please be kind and do subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tanya D, and go ahead and hit the bell button so you are notified. And also, if you don't mind liking and sharing and caring, right? So the algorithm on YouTube or other social media outlets echoes out to suggest me to other like-minded musers in the galactic universe. And or also subscribe to my podcast, Musing with Tanya D. So you are notified when I share some light. But this moon meditation is dedicated to the new moon in Aries, arriving early morning on the 1st of April in my village, 1234 a.m., just after midnight. But go ahead and check your time zone for when she apexes in your village. And Aries, Aries is our ego state of consciousness. It's our actions, our characters, our behaviors. Ruled by Mars, this is kind of our I am presence. It is fiery. It's the birth of the new. It's the spring. And being that it's all happening at the 11th degree, the last, I would say, five new moons were at 12 degrees. Um, so different sinking here. So this is the shift of how we treat ourselves on the inside. And it's going to be radiating on the outside. So we are literally in this paradigm shift to how we treat ourselves. Um, better on the inside so it will elevate and radiate on the outside, just elevating our personal love channel, pouring more love into that personal chalice. So where is it that you can add more love to the way that you treat yourself? You might feel as if you are healing your wounds because Chiron is in the mix and Mercury is not too far behind as well. So it might be some critical thinking. And it just might be easier to heal through our thoughts, our words, and possibly listening on the other side of that coin. It also, on the opposing side, you know, there's always the duality. Um, sometimes we inflict pain by being nasty with words or even projecting, oftentimes, that inside voice. So it might be easier to have the conversation with the sun, the moon, Mercury, and Chiron all in this cosmic soup to discuss those painful memories, possibly with friends, possibly journaling, possibly with yourself, which then may possibly um, lead to the healing of our personal and also even relationships that have um, fallen apart. And just to throw in some food for thought, you know, we also have a solar eclipse coming up as well. So the best time to start new projects is really during the two weeks the waxing moon phase from the day of the fool, April 1st to the 16th of April. But for the love of the moon, I love by the moon. It's the showering bliss in the galactic night sky, the otherworldly magic, this cosmic love vibration. <laughs> I just love to feel into her. But I often wonder if I'm the only one who is so intrigued with the juice of the moon. Is it that it rules over our emotions, our subconscious instincts? Being that the moon is so connected to these intrinsic parts of us, the waters, the ebbs and the flows and just cycling through every month, just connecting to our emotional field, the waves of our emotions. And once again, we're being asked to go on a journey with the moon, the energy that's going to be most affected by this moon. It's a card cardinal uh, sign. So this crossroads of Capricorn, Aries, Libra and Cancer's. So this new moon in Aries is like lighting a spark that really has the power to become this full-fledged flame. And being that Aries is that fire sign, it thrives on the adrenaline, the hero energy. And if you haven't yet to listen to my podcast about Archangel Ariel, um, 
the Archangel of the Season of Aries, please do tune into that as well. Super cool. Um, I've been having those conversations in this season. But Aries, if you know them, they're always pushing. They want us to embrace our confidence, our courage. It really is a hero's journey in a way. Um, so, you know, just allowing the energy to be passionate, persistent, and be that unstoppable force that really ignites our hearts and reminds us that life is meant to be lived, not just observed, and competing with the greatness that our heart desires because we are stronger than we often might think or believe, right? And just knowing just because Aries is brave, that doesn't mean that it's also fearless because with this new moon having Chiron, the wounded healer, is also center stage. So it may bring up the fear of failures that have held us back from playing the game of life. It's as if healing is really center stage. Um, so we're healing our inner wounds and we can shine our light forward once we go through this um, process. So coming into our own authenticity, our own integrity. So um, just a snippet for each of the signs and where this is highlighting your life. This is um, this is the I am of who we are. So for the Aries with the sun, moon and Chiron and Mercury highlighting you. Happy Earth Day, by the way. That's what I call um, our birthdays. It's your season. So coming into your authenticity of how you treat yourselves. And also, you know, you are the pure breads. You are the birth of the season. You are also the spring elementally. So you might be experienced this in its purest form, who you are, what you are creating, um, what you are thinking or who you are thought wise, who you are shining and who you are feeling. So how you treat yourself, all of this, just coming into alignment, loving yourself and how you respond to yourself out into the world, creating this emotional foundation at home, but also who you are when it comes to children, romance, and also how do you treat yourself when it comes to servicing yourself, being in the world of service or your health, your regime there as well. And also, you know, your communication strategy. What are the thoughts that beacon in when you're having those self-thought conversation? Just some things to muse about there. Taurus, for you, what's super exciting here? This new moon is lighting up your house of otherworldly adventures. So possibly having those subconscious conversations with the other realm, even Archangel Ariel, because this is that season. Also, what do you feel? Maybe feeling into your spidey senses and lighting up your intuitive responses, along with healing the wounds, possibly from another timeline, another lifetime, another dimension. And knowing that it's your house of emotional thoughts is activated and your home, maybe your home gets some spark and lights up in a loving new way. And in doing so, how you treat yourself with your health and your body. You know, those are some things that are going to be highlighted for this season for you. Gemini's for you. This is transiting your house of other people, society being seen in the galactic world. No more hiding for you. So what are those conversations that you want society to hear? It's lighting up that frequency along with the feeling you get of being seen. It really is time to shine your light out in the, the outer corridor and heal the wounds, the fears of being seen in the public eye. All that's coming to waken up for you this season. And also, you know, loving the communication that you're sharing. Your home is getting organized and cleansed of the cosmic cobwebs. And your financial sector is also, you know, sometimes when we feed the emotion, then the money comes in. It's like having soul capital. Cancer for you. This new moon is in your house of career legacy. How you're seen in the world as a leader. All these things are being activated. So for you, it's this communication that you're going to have with how you treat yourself out into the other world. 
of career and legacy parenting, how you are seen, what do you feel is the best move for you, possibly retiring or starting a new adventure? And you're going to shine in this area and heal the wounds of how you're seen in your career and legacy. It's also lighting up your feelings to yourself, how you treat yourself on your feelings and also shining light on your financial sector and then communicating how you're feeling through spirit is actually healing an aspect of you and for you. So treat yourself in kind and embrace the emotional frequency that you are. It's going to bring balance to your home and um, authenticity to your spirit. Leo, Leo's for you. This is transiting your house of higher philosophy, education, travel, Those aspects are being highlighted. So for you, and Aries does try new, dear Leos. (laughs) So it's like this communication, learning, higher, elevated, maybe possibly some spiritual aspects that you never thought of yourself to see, along with, you know, feeling into the spiritual aspects and being a light for spirit. You are the light. You are Leo. You are the sun. And healing wounds and coming into integrity of how you feel about yourself on the inside and treating yourself as you deserve to to be treated. Virgo, Virgo for you, this new moon is transiting your eighth house of boundaries and trust issues. So possibly for you, you know, communicating that you do trust yourself, that you do value yourself and you're being seen in the world of knowing and having resources available to you, feeding your integrity of who you are and how you are seen in the world and healing the wounds that came with the fear of that being seen, those boundaries and trust issues. Those are all dissipating. So you're going to change the corridor of your future self, how you're seen into the world. And isn't that about time? Libra, for you, this Aries new moon is in your opposing house of how you relate to the other. So possibly a new foundation of loving of self and loving to the other. Your relationships and partnerships are elevating. So maybe you have some integrity with how you treat the other when it comes to relationships, how you feel about the other when it comes to relationships and even healing those past wounds, those past relationships, so you can elevate and treat yourself better and having those conversations to heal those wounds as we travel through this time and space. Scorpio, Scorpio for you, this is accenting your house of service, health and well being with the possibility of treating yourself better when it comes to that inside voice conversations. Are you strict and controlling? And your home life, possibly your home life is getting an upgrade as well, along with possibly a spiritual romance. And when all of this comes together, healing the wound of how you're seen out into the world, in society, in groups and communities. So treat yourself better in those aspects. Sagittarius, this is visiting your house of you guessed it, romance, upcycling those relationships. And just like Leo, this is training right into you. So the juice is on how you're seen as a romantic person. What does that feel like? And what are the thoughts being communicated inside of you? That's all happening for you in your communication and also your home, your foundation. What does that look like? It's changing, it's shifting. So I would say elevate how you treat yourself in romance, children, play, and incorporate your home and communication with all of that. And this is also hitting your career house. So your career, possibly you feel like your career has held you back or wounds and your legacy, that will all be healed 
with this new moon if you allow it to be. Capricorn, <laughs> this new moon is in your house of home, family. And you guessed it, it's going to be playing out just exactly right there within your home and your family. Not to fear if your foundation feels a little bit turbulent with feelings and lighting up the sky of your foundation. So this has, how about how you communicate in the home? What are those communications? Hopefully they have a spiritual vibe, possibly releasing the karma, the voice inside your head um, about rising to the top. We all know you, dear Capricorn, will always rise to the top. And romance. How about a new vision of what romance looks like? And manifesting that romance, manifesting children, your home life. And healing the wounds for you when it comes to the great spirit, a higher philosophy, thoughts and beliefs. Healing all of those. And Aquarius. Aquarius for you, this is playing out in your house of communication. So those words with Mercury being there will give you some insight on how to communicate to yourself in a positive life with courage and bravery, qualities of Aries, along with your emotional foundation, manifesting a new home life. Maybe a home that's more of a sacred sanctuary for you. That sounds pretty okay to me. What about you? And for you, dear Aquarius, you will be healing wounds when it comes to your boundaries and trusting people. Trust issues might come up for you, but those will be healed. That's kind of the message of this new moon for you. Pisces. This new moon is right ahead of you. It's in your money house, your house of money. So your relationship to money, what you communicate about money, how you treat yourself with money, all that integrity with money. And you are going to have it be like this conversation possibly at your foundation, your home front, the communication there. And what are your feelings about romance, children? Those are all going to be elevated and healed along with your health. That might be on the radar for you as well. Shifting and changing your wellness regime. And what's being healed for you is also going to be your relationships. Your relationship to the other, your relationship to yourself are going to be transformed it's basically you're going to treat yourself in an elevated perspective. Actually, all of the signs, we're all going to be treating ourselves quite differently. We are who we are and acknowledging the magical being that resides within us. But that's just my philosophy because I think we're all magical beings. Just some fun insight and play there. Just remember Aries is who we are becoming. This is kind of like our foundation. It's our root center. Um, that's activated along with obviously our sacral, our sun, and we also have our solar plexus with mercury and some added chalice juice with uh, Chiron. So with that, let's do a total of 12, actually 13 breaths. The first thing we want to do because I always like to take that breath and that pause is breathe in down through the crown. And we're actually going to activate all of our subtle energy bodies, the in body subtle energies and the outer body subtle energies. And don't worry if you don't know what those are, <laughs> your energy body sure does. So does the subtle field. So just go with the flow. Either way, you're going to bring energy in through the crown kind of like a donut a torsion filled from the galactic sky all the way in down through the crown to your root center and release through your heart the sacred chalice so our first breath is going to be creating our own personal sacred grove we're going to be in our own magical sphere where nothing gets in but who we are, our higher self, 
the galactic universe, God universe, the great spirit, whatever name you choose, source, Quan Yin, whomever, <laughs> doesn't really matter. So breathe all the way in, down through the crown. Hold for a count of three at your base, your root center, Aries. And exhale, release. And in your third eye, or maybe in your feeling centers, feel your magical sphere all around you where nothing gets in because you are in your sacred grove. Inhale down through your torsion, through the crown, to your base, to your root center. And as you exhale, release any love that is based on conditions. Inhale through the crown, down to your root center. And as you exhale, I want you to exhale any feelings that are less than feelings of sadness, grief, anger, doubt, worry, fear, exhale and release. Inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center. And this time I want you to exhale the beliefs that are patterns modeled after people who you believed in and might have recognized that they're not in alignment with who you are. Exhale and release. Inhale through the crown all the way down to our root center. And on this exhale, I want you to release all characters, actions, behaviors that no longer belong. They are not who you are. Exhale, release. Inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center. And on this exhale, I want you to release all of those thoughts, all of the mental thoughts that are not clear. They might be like muddy waters. Thoughts that are not loving. Thoughts that are worrisome thoughts that are non-affirming basically thoughts that are negative actually any thought that is not in alignment with who you are exhale and release inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center hold for a count of three and on this exhale i want you to open up to receive from the universe the light, the star of who you are and how the universe sees you. Exhale and release. Inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center. And on your exhale, I want you to literally look through the eyes of spirit at your inner child and exhale release anything that isn't in alignment with the way spirit sees you exhale and release inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center and on this exhale I want you to smile put a big glorious smile on your face and I want you to lead yourself who you are with committing to your heart's desires and taking that action to be a leader for yourself and treat yourself better as you lead forward exhale and release Inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center. And on this exhale, I want you to release any actions, behaviors, or characters that are not in alignment with your soul story, your prime directive, because your soul knows who you are and what you are here to become. Exhale and release. 
Inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center. And as you take a pause here in your root center, I want you to release all manifestations that aren't in alignment with who you are. So the manifestations that are in alignment with who you are can be created in the sacred grove, in the sacred garden. Exhale and release. Inhale through the crown and all the way down to your root center. And as you're manifesting with clarity who you are, I want you to see through your third eye, feel in your energy body, even your mental body, what it is that you can pour more love into, more unconditional love on how you treat yourself, how you value yourself. And when you exhale and release anything that is less than loving to who you are in your inner chalice, in your inner chamber, exhaled and release. And the cosmic energy will transcend and transmute anything that is no longer in service to who you are throughout the next year. So with that, thanks for joining me for this Musing Moon meditation. And as always, I will see you on the other side. Inshallah. Ashe. Ah,